Welcome back, World Wide Web. I'm GW Pomacher, and you're watching the Hanging With Web Show. We are in St. Augustine, Florida, and we are hanging out right now with author Isabella Cole, the author of Her Convenient Dom. But we're also hanging out with author Anna Crystal, and she's written some other things. And we actually have three more authors that we're hanging out with all at the same time. You can't see any of them. And you can see all of them. <laughs> she doesn't have a personality disorder that, we're, that, that we can tell you about. <laughs> all we can tell you is that this is four people. Possibly five. <laughs> Six of her husband makes her mad. <laughs> but we're here right now. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thank Thanks you for, for having over. me. What do we have here? We have books. These are called books. <laughs> Before the internet, we had to pick these up and flip through them. You can get these on the internet too, though. So let's talk about these. We have, uh, where do we start? Okay. Her Blue Collar Dom Her is book one. Dom. Okay. That is book one in the Dominant Men series. Her Convenient Dom is book two, and it came out yesterday. Yesterday? Yes. Wow. Look, by the time you guys see this video, it's still only been a couple weeks, they're still shiny on the shelves. Bring one home, check it out. Give us the book blurb on these, this, 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 this group. Okay, this one is about a, an army major, a female army major. It is a, a take on an officer and a gentleman, only she's the officer and he's the factory worker. And Not a bad gig. And uh, they go through quite a bit before they actually get together, but she's used to being in charge. And when she meets him, she discovers that he's a very dominant man. And hijinks ensue, <laughs> as, as hijinks tend to do. So, yes. and there will be, I believe, seven books in this series. Uh, uh -huh. They're not all about the same people. Okay. So, um, like I said, book two came out yesterday. Awesome. Fantastic. Um, and, and that is with my Isabella Cole pen name, which okay. is my books that are a little bit spicier. Okay. Isabella Cole is actually a USA Today best-selling author. Outstanding. That's a good day, by the way. If you're a writer, that's a good day. That phone call when somebody says, guess what list you just mm -hmm. made? Good day. And the, the, my sweet pen name is Anna Christel. Okay. Uh, so Anna's books are tamer. Uh, this one is called Abraham's Soul, and it's actually a Mennonite love story. And a, it is set in the area of southern Indiana where I grew up. Wow. So uh, people who are from my area will be very familiar with Landmarks places in the book. And, yeah. But it's about a, a Mennonite man who has fallen away from his faith and the uh, girl who comes to work for him who tries to bring him back. Oh, wow. So I, it's more of a Christian romance. So you see, I write a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. <laughs> well, a writer writes, right? You write whatever the voices in your head tell you to put on the page, right? right? You have two other pen names. Uh, Angel Ames is Angel another. Angel Ames. Angel Ames. Okay. Um, Right now, Angel only has one book out. There will be another one soon. Angel's the lazy personality. She's not working. <laughs> yeah, hard right. That's right. She's a newer one. Angel, <laughs> Angel writes spicy books. Spicy books, okay. Uh, and then I use my real name, which now, shock, shock, some authors won't reveal their real names, but I do write nonfiction under my real name. Okay, so... Um, your 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 real name, your real pen name. You actually write nonfiction. Yes, that's what correct. kind of nonfiction? Well, uh, my 16-year-old granddaughter needed to write a children's book for a class in school. Wow! And she asked me to help her, and I did. And without telling her, I entered it in a contest, and we won a publishing contract. That's fantastic. And then uh, I, my hometown in Southern Indiana, which is a very small town named Lagodi. Uh, our library there is building a new building, a new library building, and they're trying to raise money. So a group of people who grew up there wrote stories about their memories 
sent them to me. I edited them, put them all together, and sent them to one of my publisher friends. And the proceeds for that are going to the library fund. That is awesome. We're going to make sure we put a link down below so you guys can go on over and grab a great book full of an anthology full of wonderful stories. Um, and it's all going to a good cause. Right. That's fantastic. We're going to grab that link down below. So, wow. You are one busy writer. I am, and I also edit for my publisher. Wow. So I'm very busy. <laughs> wow. You know what? A writer that can edit is awesome because that's a writer that understands the importance of the editing process. Right. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I, I learned the importance of that process with all of the dirty letters from my editor. <laughs> Stop already. And, and so, because I tend to write, I always tell people, I tend to write uh, what I would, what I, I, I term as, I, um, I'm sort of a Dickinsonian writer. I like a good floral prose. I hate the notes from my editor saying, saying, number one, what the hell does this mean? Mm -hmm. Number two, simplify, will you please? Mm -hmm. Dickens is okay, but throw a little Hemingway in there just for fun. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. So right. knowing, <laughs> knowing what your editor is looking for is, is good. When, you know. Yeah, I've learned, um, learned over the years from my editors, and that's how I am one of my former editors um, got me the job as an editor, so... Awesome! That is fantastic. Um, How many books do you have out total today? Oh, gosh. I have... I'm sorry. I've lost count. You but there are over 30. Lost count. <gasps> That's a prolific writer. But I have too many pen names. That's, <laughs> yes. Uh, but, interestingly <coughs> enough, they all do something a little different. True. Very they true. Really do. You, you really do. You have split your personality into great... Category, mm -hmm. Genre, category. And, and my husband likes to tell people that he's married to four different women. See? It's it's a win-win. <laughs> and, and and which one he's married to depends on the mood of the day. The mood and what, yeah, what kind of day is it? So, um, uh, yeah, how do you, you know, you get up in the morning and you're going to put in a little time behind the keyboard. How do you decide who's doing the writing today? Well, I have a, a schedule made out for uh, the whole year of what I'm oh, going to write. Year. Yeah. And then I just kind of split it up. So See. right now I'm working on this the Isabella Cole series. I also wrote an Anna book that is um, the Heart and Soul series. Okay. There are six authors, six stories. How many of them are you? No, I'm one. I'm one. <laughs> just one, okay. <laughs> Jeanette Winters, um, Jeanette Winters, Lena Lane, Elizabeth Lennox, Ann Welch, Elizabeth Scott and myself each wrote a novella. It's oh, very and cool. and they're all set the same week in the same place at a mountain resort in Tennessee. And the books are coming out for pre-order right now and so far the first four are up for pre-order. We're releasing one every week and then in May, starting in May, there'll be one they'll be available and it'll be and one each week. Oh, that's really cool. So there were six, like six, six authors, six happily ever after stories. They're romantic comedy. Very nice. That's awesome. And so you got the whole year planned out. So you just kind of wake up and you're like, okay. Today's Isabella. Isabella, go to work. That's nice. Uh, or, or Anna or, mm -hmm. you know, you guys read the list down below. I'll put it there. I'm uh, also, uh, another thing I'm involved in is I had a reader, and this is a, on a kind of more of a serious topic, but awesome. um, I wrote a series called the Fab Five series. The Fab Five. Fab Five. Fab Five, okay. And one of the books in that series dealt with domestic abuse. Ooh. And I had a reader who won the first book in the series at a release party on Facebook. After she read it, she went and bought the whole rest of the series and read it in one week. Wow. Then she contacted me, and one of the books dealt with uh, domestic abuse, and she asked me to write her life story. And she said, I've never told anybody wow. this, but back in the 60s I was abused, and I would like for you to write my story. So I am in the process of working with her right now, wow. telling her story. That's incredible. I, I, you know... You, th over 30 books, you've had an incredible career as a writer and an editor, 
and a writer and a writer and a writer. <laughs> See what I did there? Anyway, um, but what a payoff to have someone reach out to you and say, tell my story. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about what I do is to get to come on camera and let and tell your story. So to have you know to be able to say here your writing was so good, I want you to tell my story. Yeah, in this I was story. I was shocked. I mean, I was that's amazing. And it and it took me a while to even get up the nerve to do it because I didn't think I could do it justice. But she and I are working together on it, and I hope to have that released sometime this year. And ladies and gentlemen and writers, those stories need to be told. They need to be told now. Uh, it's it's timely. It's time that mm -hmm. that we all pay attention to these things, um, and it's time to tell the stories before they get lost. Well, because there are so many, you know, with with Fifty Shades of Grey success, there are so many of that genre, including my own that I write, and people need to know the difference between the two. It really, truly. <laughs> and her this lady's story. She's in her seventies now. This happened to her in her six when. Back in the 60s when she was a young girl. Uh -huh. And her story is a story of abuse. She's lucky to be alive. Playful BDSM stories like Fifty Shades of Grey are a totally different thing. And well, people need is, to be made aware of that difference. Yeah, one is, one is recreation and it has rules. It does. True. There are rules. There are, there's an etiquette to it. The other is unbridled primitive mm -hmm. behavior. Non-consensual. It's non-consensual, yeah. and, and there are no rules, and no matter what rules you think you can put on it, you can't, because if it was controllable, <coughs> he or she wouldn't do it, because they could control it, right. but they can't. And so, please, especially if you like romance, and <coughs> you like the naughty romances and the BDSSF, Learn the difference. Right. And know the difference. So I'm, you know, it's that's why it's a challenge for me to write it, because I'm used to writing the fun fiction play. This is the fun version. And hers is the real life, she's lucky to be alive version. So. Wow. Well, well first of all, thank you for telling her story, and thank good you. luck in telling her story. Thank it's, you so it's much. It's a very difficult thing to do. Uh, it's a very difficult topic to attack. Yes, it is. You know, head on like that. We have to wrap it up. That's my card. So I'm going to say thank you to our partners and friends at Some Unique Magazine, Famous Faces and the Funnies, Space Coast Comics, and the great folks at Indie Originals, uh, Jay Bauer Art for all the fantastic art that's on our set this weekend, Celestial Healings, Krypton Radio, the Foxwood Wine Company, and our great friend, author Yvonne Mason at Off the Chain Radio. Thank you guys for supporting the show, for sharing these videos, and these fantastic creative artists all over the World Wide Web. We hope that you will too, so make sure you subscribe, come back over and over again, log on, <coughs> tune in, and see who we're hanging with next.